Good afternoon, YouTube. JS here in Louisiana. And again, coming to you with another Boer War equipment uh, run. So, okay, you've heard me talk about a few of my guns. You've heard me see uh, about some of my equipment. Now let's talk to you about a little bit of some history here. So, 1877, the British Empire annexes the Transvaal and the Orange Free State. So, those two little countries, they're agricultural, they're fairly poor. The British basically had an intent to try and basically make it where their economy was dependent exclusively on British trade. So, they went in. There was a lot of resentment in 77 when the British came in. And here's another fun thing to point out to you all, that by 1879, when the British began attempting to conquest of the Zulu land, the Boers, with the diminished uh, uh, British military strength in the region, took advantage of this. Now, this can neither be said yay or nay to it, but here we think of it this way. You've got 2,400 British soldiers march into, a, uh, into Zulu land. That constitutes a huge bulk of British military might in the region. January 1879, the British Army, armed with these here Martini rifles, supposed to, supposed to have been a quick, and easy, and decisive victory, but due to British arrogance, overconfidence, and just poor planning and good run of bad luck, 2,400 British soldiers are killed and disappear. However, though, this, th later on that same day, now mind you, that was at Ascent Duana. Later on that same day, Rourke's Drift happens where 120 some odd British soldiers hold off same Zulu army with basically stunning victory. Ra to the 24th. Well, that being said though, the British attempted to whitewash the entire Isenduana campaign with Rourke's Drift by issuing 11 Victoria Crosses. And again, they made a great movie back in the 60s. Moving on from that though, this is January 1879. A year later, by December 1880, the Boers are attempting to make their own independent stand. They want their own country back. And, dun da da da, they are still armed with these. You can get a huge chunk of these in South Africa. The Martini Henry rifle. Now, breech loading, single shot. And I've got here in my pocket one of the rounds. Single shot, breech loading. Put that in there, close it, put it to your shoulder, you're good to go. And when you're empty, just pull it and ejects. All right, so, <clears throat> the Boers basically put up a stop defense. In fact, so much of a defense that in eight, by 1881, the Boers had basically chastised the British to the point where they had had no victories in South Africa. None whatsoever. <clears throat> uh, pardon me. Uh, Lang's Neck, Majuba Hill, just to name a few places for that matter, where the British were overconfident and were beaten back. And mind you, they were both sides were armed with the same rifle, the Martini Henry. Now, however, though, a little thing to point out, though, the Boers didn't have a standardized set of supply lines. So what you could basically assume is that anything goes. All right, it would not be uncommon to see Colt uh, Colt single action revolvers, old Civil War Colt guns in South Africa in the hands of the Boers. It's, they were there. So, moving on. Gold is, dis is discovered in the Transvaal. And the Witban sand and all the gold now accounts for 30 some odd percent of the gro world's gold supply. So now the British, seeing that they made a bit of a mistake, said, hmm, how can we get this back? So, they basically started with the Jameson Raid and Cecil Rhodes and all those other fun characters. Then basically the Boers with the assumption that war would be coming against the British realized that their single shot martinis were not up to snuff. So what did they do? They turned around and they purchased 1895 Mauser rifles from Germany. 7 millimeter rifles, stripper clip fed now, bolt action. Now mind you, at the time of, eight, of the 1890s, 1880s, Sorry, 1890s, my bad. This was the most advanced military rifle you can get. Now, you've all seen my bandolier here. I had this made custom through uh, uh, What Price Glory, and they're still for sale online. But this is the most important feature of this rifle, which made it so remarkable in comparison to what the British had. Now, mind you, the Lee Enfield's not a bad rifle, but this was it. The, set, the five round stripper clip. 
pop it open, insert the clip into these little in this little special notch in the bolt here, and you are good to go. Five shots, and you can. It's uh, this rifle is set out to 2,000 meters. Now, mind you, that's a very optimistic thing. That's volley fire, but anything within 600 meters, according to many British officers, anything within 600 meters was a dead man. So. With that being said, though, the equipment of the standard bore commando would be as follows. You'd have, it obviously, a canteen, and this here is an American Civil War canteen, which was surplus by the 1880s. You could buy them anywhere. Uh, your bandolier, which would have been most important. Mine here, again, it's Stott's Artillery. Um, oh, here's a fun thing I forgot to mention. My new hat pin from the Transvaal, custom made in South Africa. Now. The goodie bag, your haversack, very important piece of kit. Now, mind you, the average commando would not be wearing this on his uh, on his person. He would have this on his horse, because again, they were mounted art. They're mounted infantry. But let's show you what's, what you would find in some of this kit. For starters, most importantly, you would need food. Now, to those who are wondering, this doesn't look very edible. You're probably right. It's very unedible to me. This is. Ha uh, corned beef hash. This is what I would consider standard issue British Army ration. A little tin meat, some cornbread, I'm sorry, correction, corned beef, and I got a couple cans of this in the bag here. I have a tin of tea. Obviously, one uh, man needs a knife for cooking. Your fire kit. more canned meat. Now this right here would be another fun thing. Oh, a boar needs a pipe. So, in this case here I have, sorry, in this case here I have a British Army haversack as my utilities bag. I have here a really cool thing, a little folding skillet. Very, very important. A gourd bowl. I'm assuming very common feature in South Africa. Now, correct me if I'm wrong on these things, peoples. A cook set, uh, uh, sorry, a kettle. More just like a mug with a lid, but again, this would not be carried with the average command. Let's be carrying uh, on his horse. I got, a, I got a cup in here, a fork, a knife. Probably redundancy, mind you, carrying two knives, but it can never go bad. What I got in here? Oh, two very important pieces of kit, minus my pipe here. I've got a salt shaker. Note the saying, can that which is tasteless be eaten without salt? Very important. And also very important here is my rum flask. You need a rum flask, no matter what. Rum is good for the field. But again, your pipe. Uh, the average board commando smoked a pipe. So in this case, as you can see, I've got mine. Now tobacco would have been a common thing to find out in the veldt because while well, British uh, soldiers would smoke cigarettes, Boer commandos didn't have the luxury of the paper, so a pipe was probably an essential piece of kit. All right, well, there you have it. Oh, I forgot one more important thing, a spyglass. Gotta be able to see what you're shooting at. So. Again, none of this would probably be on in a haversack on your side. You might have some bread in there also, uh, dried meats and so on and so forth, but on average, this would not be on your person. This would be on your kit. Now, again, moving on back onto my rifle here, uh, the Mauser rifle. Five shots, which can only be operated as fast as you can operate the bolt. It's clear. Cocks on closing here, so you can see when it comes up, there's a little bit of stop. And there you go. Five shots, seven by 57 Mauser, and this rifle right here outshot the British Enfield all day. The only catch is that the ammunition supplies of the Boers was not domesticated. They had to bring order ammunition with the guns. So a couple, I think it was 30,000 rifles and uh, 
40,000 no, 40, rifles and 30,000 carbines made it into South Africa from uh, the Mauser co company. And this one here is made in Chile. I've probably said this a million and one times to y'all. But again, look in the light on this rifle. Tell me this is not a beautiful piece of equipment. And this is an original, mind you. As is here, uh, my martini, which is also just as beautiful with a wonderful stock and everything. But again, this is a center fired black powder rifle. That's a smokeless rifle. That right there, and its advantage alone. So I hope you all enjoyed, and uh, if you have any questions, any comments, please leave them down below. And uh, thank you very much, and uh, long live the Mauser.